Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time to listen. My name is Nicole, and today this message is about those individuals who wanted you to be like, and you can feel in the blank in terms of what person uh, that was. Um, Parents tend to do this sort of thing, grandparents, uh, relatives who have their share of favorites. Why can't you be more like? More like who? More like your brother, more like your sister. Why can't you just not act that way? Okay. Usually it's something they don't like about you. So they will think about others who don't give them as much grief or uh, those that don't expect as much um, individuals who simply are just no bother um, people who have connections or people who are smarter or people who have money why can't you be more like okay but we're going to attack those individuals yes in the spiritual realm who have said this we are going to go all in on them because you see what they don't realize is that God created each and every one of us and that if he wanted us to be more like someone, he would have made us more like that person. You see, some of these people, especially parents, grandparents, people who have been responsible for you for a time, they wanted you to be more like them. You see, they did not want you to be more like Jesus Christ, because if they wanted that, they would have behaved like Jesus Christ. They would have been a model for you. But no, it's about what I want. Here we go again. That selfish, self-absorbed, self-centered type of individual. It's what I want. And I want a mini me. Some of them, I want to live vicariously through my children. And so in order to do that, I'm going to encourage them to do the things that I never got around to doing or the things that I failed miserably at. Um, Whatever I want, I'm going to make sure that I raise the children accordingly. And so you are doing a disservice to any child that you do this sort of thing to. Whether you're a parent or a teacher or the friend or the cousin or the aunt or the uncle. Look, God created these children as well as adults, sons, daughters, what have you, in the way that he wanted. But they aren't able to connect with what God has created because somebody keeps standing in the way. Is that you? Is that you? I want him to be more like, and I just wish... It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, his brother is so just, I want her to be more like her sister or her aunts or her, I mean, I just wish, but she's just so, and she's always been, the woman is living her life. (laughs) She got married, took care of her business and continues to take care of her business. And you want her to be more like her boring whoever? Or you want her to be more like her stingy whoever? Or you want her to be more like? Come on. And we got those individuals. I wish you was more like your brother. Your brother likes to have some fun. He likes to party. He likes to get his freak on. You know, he just like his mama. Why you Why you got to be so dull? I mean, why you got to be about, what is it you and your husband likes to to do huh you like to hang out with uh, those yuppie people i mean huh? you know they mock folk act stupid act immature foolish do you realize what you're asking when you say you want somebody to be more like that very thing that you don't like about them is the very thing that god is going to work with them on you see If they are a praying person, if they're a believer in Christ, if they've given that very thing over to the one true God, that's the thing that once they do get over whatever that unflattering thing is, they just might be a force (laughs) to be reckoned with. 
And I'm talking about those types of things that God wants us to let go of. I'm not talking about a hardworking individual turning corrupt to party with his mama. Come on, that's just stupid. I'm talking about that individual that, yeah, they might have that addiction or they might have that um, just negative thing in their personality that you don't particularly care for. Or maybe, you know, you didn't like all of their storytelling or life experience or you don't like didn't like the fact that they influenced this one and that one in this faith or that social group or whatever. Well, God can remove those sorts of things. Because sometimes people have epiphanies, people have enlightenment, people mature. And then once those things are removed, they don't have anything to talk to you about or talk to those around you about any longer. Come on. I know it happened to me. There's no conversation for certain individuals no more because you see, God got me on a certain path, if you will, that the very thing that annoyed you or you didn't like or what have you, you didn't realize I was just a season in your life for that time being. And what I was giving you was the types of things that some individuals thought was okay and all right for that time, for that season. You see, sometimes the things that we do, it's just seasonal. It's just seasonal. And it might be annoying. Like I remember when I first started out, recording audios there were certain fillers that I used that were annoying but then over time as you talk more as you learn more as you grow as you listen to more speakers as you take advice things begin to change and the funny thing is that some of those audios they don't appeal to the people any longer okay because you know we change we grow we evolve But if people along the way kept telling me things like, why can't you be more like and named all these big name televangelists and so forth? What do you think? What do you think they were doing? Wanting to control? Wanting to manipulate? Wanting to get me to be something that God didn't create me to be? Everybody has their callings, their giftings. Some folks just haven't tapped into them yet. And sometimes that's why they act the way they act about others, because they want you to be more like so-and-so, because so-and-so is not growing and evolving and maturing like the way you are. So sometimes the devil puts these people up to telling you these things to set you back. Like in the example where the mother wants her child to be more fun and yeah, why can't you be like me? You know, this sort of thing. And meanwhile, being like you is what? You got to be careful once again what you ask for. Because see, you could very get, very well get that and then look at that person and go, oh my God, they're corrupted. They're not getting ahead. The wake up call could show up on your life and you go, I don't like this. And now I've recruited all these people to act this way. There was an uncle who... His influence was so strong that he turned everybody out on drugs who he encountered and people were so upset, but he was supposed to be the favorite and he was supposed to be fun and he was partying and he was, you know, that one that everybody liked to talk to and hang out with. And then everybody ended up having the types of addictions, those that were around him that he was struggling with. And as he got older, it wasn't so fun. And those same people who thought he was so cool and great ended up becoming enemies. So while there were those, I was like, I wish he was more like. And he's so fun and all that other stuff. Those that resisted the devil, come on. Those that resisted the devil and flee ended up having better. Or the devil fled, I should say, because after a while, you see, some people. They don't want to be around you anymore, so they move on. So let me make sure I correct that. But, um, yeah, you resist the devil, he will flee. And so that's what happened. And now those people that didn't fall into the snare of the demonic, they are so much better now in their lives. And they didn't die prematurely like he did, you see. Hmm. What's the price? What's the cost of being like that fun, popular, entertaining person? The one that keeps people laughing on Facebook. What's the price? 
or that one that's out there inviting everybody to the club what's the price i remember i used to be that person you couldn't hang out with me unless you got your drink on yeah but then when porsche comes to shove and things go down hmm it's not so fun it's not so cool to be around certain people you see some of you all the lord is telling me in the spirit it's time for you to grow up and stop you showed your immaturity years ago when you played a little game between your children and you said, I wish you was more like. And so the price that you're paying right now is that your children don't want to be bothered with you. See, you may have forgot the things that you said and you may have wanted them to, oh, just forget about it. I mean, what's the big deal and all that? It is a big deal. It is a big deal when people repeatedly say and do things that hurt folks. So it wasn't enough to hurt the person physically. Then you got to turn around and hurt the person person emotionally. Then you got to act like the te teenager who is calling them names. Then you want to play the comparison game of who's better. Then you want to play the little game of I got goodies and I'm not sharing my goodies only. Well, I'll share my goodies only with the people who I really like. OK, all of that is immaturity. All of that is what children do. And we've got adult children. I know some of you all don't want to believe that parents and grandparents are adult children, but they are because I just gave you some examples of adult children who play this little game and then they don't expect to reap the consequences later on people get tired of playing these little games people get tired of seeing their adult mothers and fathers acting like children people get tired of seeing these so-called beloved popular fun people corrupt themselves as well as corrupt others and so when they set up a, when they raise a standard when they say enough is enough those that were doing all of that now they want to mark them and say, well, mm, she wasn't all that anyway. Well, she wasn't cool or I always had a problem with her. You always had a problem because she was the one that demanded that you grow up. She was the one that was giving you, come on, some of you all, was giving you the Porsche back when everybody else was going along with the programming. Or he was the one that he manned up before his daddy manned up. He stood flat foot and looked the man straight in his eyes. And what? He gets accused of being disrespectful because he's standing up for what's right. That's what teenagers do, right? They rebel. They act up. The Israelites were like teenagers. God would speak to them, tell them what was right. And they wanted to just continue on and do things they had no business. And so after a while, even God took them out. And some of you all, you know some people that, they don't have much time on this planet and they continue. They insist on acting like rebellious Israelites. They insist on playing these games where I wish that so-and-so was more like more like the devil. Huh? More like Lucifer. Is that what you want? Are you sure? Because see, sooner or later, there are those individuals who end up killing, stealing and destroying. So you better be careful what you wishing for, what you hoping for. I wish she was more down to earth and she wasn't so stuffy. That down to earth might be the thing that corrupted her or killed her and killed her emotionally in the past. Are you sure you want that? You see, you got to be careful what you're wishing for, what you're hoping for, what you're praying for. Even Paul, he had a thorn in his flesh. Okay. And that thorn in his flesh may have been the very thing that was keeping him close to the one true God. You see. Sometimes we don't know what it is that God is doing. Sometimes we do because he'll speak to us. But if he hasn't spoken to you about what he's doing in that relative or friend's life that you don't quite get, don't quite understand, then it's best just, as I've said in other audio, keep your mouth shut. Or tell those around you who keep criticizing, keep your mouth shut. She's not like your daughter. She's not like your favorite. She's not like your son. She's not, or he's not, whoever that might be. And so it is what it is until certain people move in this life and do something a bit different. They're going to be who they're going to be. Of course, we want nothing but the best for the children of God. We want to see people be better 
than they were yesterday. But some folks, they're going to take a little longer than others. Their work's in progress, as we all are. But others refuse, though, you see, change. Others rebuke change. Others don't want to do anything but go along with the programming that somebody put upon them because they want to stay in somebody's good graces. So, yeah, <laughs> act like this one and you might get the goodies. Do this and, woo, they might really like and love you. Come on now. Once again, immature thinking, immature behaviors. I want to leave you with some scriptures because we have some individuals that they want, they want very much to be like God, right? Of course, you are only going to get but so far, okay, in the spiritual realm because God is God and we don't want to start tiptoeing into Lucifer's territory, how he was behaving, you know. You don't want to go that far, but there are the ways, right, of the Lord, and there are the things that you've seen that godly people carry, you know, um, they have a virtuous spirit, right, they are the type of individuals that they're not playing the comparison, who's better, and they're not, the, uh, you know, these comparison games, and uh, they're just not immature in the way that they behave, they're very mature, um, Matthew 5, 6, blessed, okay, somebody's about to get their blessing. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. If I'm thirsting for righteousness, I'm not going to play these little games between people. Okay. If I'm thirsting for righteousness, I'm not falsely accusing people of things and I'm not taking things personal because my relationship is personal and it is with the one true God. Okay, so I'm going to the one true God with the burdens of the day, with the people who are saying the things that they have no business saying, right? And then I'm letting that go and I'm moving on about my business, my kingdom business. Okay, some folks, what you're doing is you're spending far too much time concerned about what they said about you. Okay, so now it's time to shift gears and start being concerned about what God is going to say about you on judgment day. Okay. And if you can get some things right on this side, you won't have to be concerned about as much <laughs> on the other side. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You're in your Bible. You're about God's business. You know, you may occasionally meet with the congregation or you might be doing that on a regular basis or you might not be meeting with anyone right now at this particular time but you're simply studying and showing that self-approved god is good with it okay <laughs> we know that organized religion oftentimes has its share of corruption scandal what have you um so for now that's what some people are doing and praise the lord i know i'm one of them I don't want to get mixed up in why can't you be more like the Pentecostals? Why can't you be more like the Baptists? Why can't you be more like the Jehovah Witnesses? Why can't you be more like the AMEs and the Lutherans? Why can't you be more like the Catholics and the Buddhists and the non-denominationals? And the come on, we could go on and on, Church of God in Christ. And everybody has their rules and regulations and policies and procedures. We got some Christians who... You are ensnared by your organized religion. You can't move to the right. You can't move to the left. We got to look at Jesus, you see. Jesus wasn't going around talking about you need to be more like this religion and that one. And he went in. He had a word for these people. Then he had to go. He wasn't sitting on benches week after week after week he utilized what god had given him and was out there meeting the people where they are most people aren't going to your church that's why the outreach 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 for many churches has to be amped up and going that direction wanting them to be more like you on these outreach programs and then bringing them back into the church. God sees the manipulation and the power of persuasion that goes on. 
because some folks ultimately want some money to pay some bills because they lost a lot of people and God allowed it. That's what the minister's not going to preach about on Sunday. Well, God allowed me to lose a lot of my congregation because, well, God had a purpose and plan for their lives and he didn't want them to be more like me. Ooh, that's a confession. You see, you can only stay under a teacher but for so long and then you've got to move on. You've got to be out there practicing what you've learned. Not talking about being more like you, but more like Jesus. And Jesus was on a mission. He was moving. He was proactive. And some of you are called to move clear out of uh, your state. And you still haven't done it because you're holding on to somebody who told you that we need you here. What did God say? They want me to be more like, want you to be more like who? It better be more like Jesus. No, they want me to be more like their denomination. Well, you're not going to be more like their denomination. And I, and I just come against anything that puts people back in boxes again. You just came out of a box dealing with a knucklehead. Some of you women. Some of you men, and now they want to put you in some kind of box spiritually. Now we're going into spiritual abuse at some point. No. What did God say? He said, I'm supposed to learn. You're supposed to learn what? Well, I'm supposed to learn how to study more. Time management, about studying. Okay, what else? He told me I'm supposed to pray more, fast, worship. Okay, what else? He told me that I'm supposed to dress with a... With a, a long dress and a long sleeve. Uh, no, he didn't. Man told you that. Well, he told me that I'm supposed to make sure that I have uh, um, uh, this this belief and that one. Excuse me? No, that sounds like man to me. What the Bible say? What the God say? Well, the way he put it, the man said, mm -mm. he wants you to be more like him. We rebuke Satan. We rebuke Satan. You see, Satan gets in there and with a smile on his face. And Satan gets in there and the next thing you know, you are part of something that is an occult type of philosophy. An occult way of thinking. Next thing you know, you caught up in paganism because the church said it's okay. Uh -huh. Excuse me? Yeah, through the holidays. You got to go to the Lord with those types of things because the holidays is, is not the type of thing that we want to get mixed up in. But they said that that's what they do. Yeah, that's what they do. But what did God tell you to do? See, not everybody who is preaching and teaching is supposed to be doing the types of things that look a lot like the world. Some folks will do that sort of thing for a time because it's what draws people. But then after a while, God convicts them and says, okay, you got as many people as you're going to get. Now take that tree down. <laughs> Come on, put that Easter egg hunt up. You don't need no more people on that particular marketing plan. You see. And then was it really God to begin with? Oh, there's so much. There's so much. We cannot be like people. We got to be like our Heavenly Father, whose Son died on the cross, Jesus, and who left behind the Holy Spirit, who ascended unto heaven. And some folks would have issue with that in their particular denominations. And it's Bible, <laughs> Lord Jesus. But they want you to be more like, more like their watered down gospel, more like their lukewarm Christianity. Some of them will say that the gifts died when the apostles died. And that is not true. God is still using people all around this world. And there are those that have gifts. Very powerful gifts. Gifts that heal. Gifts that move on men and women to walk a righteous path. Alright. So I leave you with that. Something to ponder. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. If you fear God more than you fear man, you won't be falling under man's snare or woman's snare.
because you know Jesus for yourself. And if you have read Jesus' uh, um, uh, read about Jesus' ministry and what he stands for, you won't get caught up in man-made, organized religion. You'll learn a few things and then you'll move on. You'll speak a word and then you'll move on like Jesus did. God will give you the words to speak. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, NM Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. If you feel so moved to give, you are welcome to do so. Blessings to you.